Hello and welcome to TED IELTS. My name is David Wills and today I will show you how to write better process diagram descriptions for IELTS writing task one by using the passive voice. First, before we begin, let me remind you that I have a new book out. It's absolutely free. You don't have to pay one penny to get it. Instead, just go to my website, www.tedielts.com, and on the right-hand side of the page, in what we call the sidebar, you'll find a link to the free download. It's in a Google Drive file. It's called Grammar for IELTS Writing. I hope it can help you get a, a much better band score for your IELTS writing. That's task one and two. And if you enjoy the book, please consider giving it a review on Amazon, on Goodreads, on your blog, on your Facebook or Twitter or anywhere. Your kind words will be very welcome. So today we're going to be looking at the passive voice. But first, let's ask what voice means. So in past lessons, we've covered tenses, our past tenses, present tenses, our future tenses. Today, though, we're looking at voice, and we only have two voices in English. There's the active voice and the passive voice. The active voice is far more common than the passive voice. It's the language you'll use just about every day. It's the first thing you, you're taught in English, and it usually goes subject, verb, object. When we're talking in the active, it's very straightforward, it's very simple to understand. But today we're going to be asking why we would use the passive voice, and when, and also we'll look at how we use the passive voice. Actually, the passive voice is quite important for IELTS. Not all parts, it can be used a little bit in the speaking test, and it can be used in the writing, particularly in task one, and especially it can be used for describing process diagrams, which many students find quite difficult. In an active sentence, the subject is doing a verb. In a passive sentence, the verb is being done to the subject. Let's look at an example. So here we're going to take a kind of childish sentence, but I think it illustrates quite well how this works. So here in this active voice sentence, the cat ate the mouse. It's very simple to understand. There's a cat, there's a mouse, and the cat is eating the mouse. Of course, it's past tense. We'll come to that later. Here are some more examples. The poacher shot the tiger. The printer ate my paper, and Sarah will give a speech to the class. In each case, the person or thing listed first is doing a verb. I'll just note for uh, number two there, when we're talking about machinery or technology, sometimes when it destroys something, you would say to eat. A, a printer might eat your paper. An ATM might eat your bank card, for example. So the passive voice takes these and it turns them backwards. So here we can see the, the uh, opposite of our cat and mouse sentence. Here the mouse was eaten by the cat. So what's happened in this sentence? Well, the mouse and cat have changed place. The cat has gone from being the first part of the sentence to being the second part. However, is the mouse eating the cat now? Of course not, that's ridiculous. But we're putting focus on the mouse. The cat is still the one doing the eating, but we're thinking about what the eating is being done to. In these next examples, we can see we've done exactly the same thing. We've flipped the place of the subject and object. However, what comes first is still considered the subject. It's just now receiving the action of the verb instead of doing it. The tiger was shot by the poacher. My paper was eaten by the printer and a speech will be given to the class by Sarah. 
When we learn English, we usually look at the active voice. That's because it's far more common than the passive voice, and there's certain reasons for this. The active voice is more direct. It is easier to understand, in that it doesn't really sound very awkward. It's more concise. That means it gets across the information in a much uh, more simple way, a much shorter way even. And it clearly indicates the relationship between the different parts of the sentence. It is therefore the best type of voice for expressing most simple ideas. Let's look at these examples. I watered the plant yesterday. This is a very simple sentence to understand. There's the person, I. There's the verb, to water. When we're talking about plants, we put water on something and water becomes a verb. And the plants. So it's very clear I am doing something to the plants and that verb is watering. If we were to turn it around and make it into a passive voice sentence, it would not be so clear. The plants were watered by me yesterday. This would sound a little strange to a native speaker. It would be a little, a little confusing. It sounds unnecessary. It sounds almost too formal for the situation. But we do have certain situations where the passive is necessary or advisable. We're gonna look at two situations here. The first situation is when you don't know who or what did the verb or perhaps you don't want to or don't need to say. The second is when you instead want to focus on who is receiving the action of the verb. Perhaps that is the most important part of the sentence. Let's look at these examples. The first one says, a man was arrested last night. You could have said the active voice, the police arrested a man last night, but is it necessary to say who did the arresting? No. Who else is going to arrest you? It's only the police that arrest people. So it is unnecessary to include the person or people who are doing the verb. The next one, a woman was murdered. Do we know who murdered her? No, we don't. So we can't say. In this case, we put the woman first. And shoplifters will be prosecuted. Well, by whom? Again, it is not necessary to say this. We're putting the emphasis on the shoplifters and the fact that they will be prosecuted. Sometimes we can do it either way. The active or the passive voice is fine. In these examples, On the Road was written by Jack Kerouac and Jack Kerouac wrote On the Road the sentence essentially has the same meaning, however, we're putting a different level of importance on the different parts. In the first example, we say, on the road was written by Jack Kerouac, that is the passive voice. And here we're expressing the fact that on the road, that's a novel, is the most important thing. The author is less important. In the second example, Jack Kerouac wrote on the road, we're putting the emphasis on Jack Kerouac, the author. He is more important than the book. So we can use the passive voice to indicate levels of importance. Forming the passive voice is actually quite simple. We simply find a version of the, the verb to be, and we use the past participle of the main verb. Let's look at these sentences. Susan made these cakes. So the verb is to make. We need to then move the object into the subject position, these cakes. This is plural. Therefore, we use the past plural version of to be, which is were. These cakes were made by Susan. In order to be able to make the passive voice easily and fluently, we need to be familiar with all the different versions of to be. We can see them here on the screen. Let's take an example of the verb to write. The past participle of to write is written. Let's see how it conjugates with the various forms of to be. We have is written, had been written, was written, is going to be written, and so on. 
It's important to note that you can only use the passive voice with transitive verbs. That means verbs that can take an object. An intransitive verb, which cannot take an object, cannot be made into the passive voice. We can see some examples here. She cleaned the apartment can be changed into the apartment had been cleaned because you can add an object to the verb clean. However, she arrived at the apartment. We can't say the apartment had been arrived at because arrived is intransitive. Although sometimes we can remove the, the person or thing that does the verb, uh, at other times it's desirable to include that. And we would use the word by and then followed by that um, person or thing. In this case, we're going to use the example, the poem was written by Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg is one of Jack, Kerouac, Jack Kerouac's Beat Generation contemporaries, by the way. In this case, we could as equally say um, the active voice ver version, Allen Ginsberg wrote the poem. As you can see, it's quite simple to flip back and forth between active and passive voice. So why would we want to do this? Well, in the IELTS exam, you might be asked about movies, uh, music, books, um, art, and talking about great works of art or artists, we actually have quite a lot of opportunity to use the passive voice. However, while you're probably watching this video is figuring out um, how better to write a process diagram. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So let's do a little bit of practice describing a process diagram. So let's take a look at this process diagram. On the surface, it actually looks a little difficult to describe, but if you spend a couple of minutes looking at it, trying to understand, you'll find it's actually quite easy. For a start, there are two parts. We can describe one part and then the other, giving each one a separate paragraph. The diagram on the left, that's the cement production, clearly happens first because we need cement in order to make the concrete. We can see it's described in order of events from top to bottom in both cases. So we can describe it in a pretty logical order. There really are no complex parts. However, you might look at the language and initially find it quite difficult. Fortunately, we have nouns like limestone and clay that even if we don't know exactly what we mean, we can see what these things basically are. Then there are some nouns referring to different parts of the, the process that we, we can actually turn into verbs, and these are quite simple. Mixer can become mix, crusher can become crush, grinder can become grind, and so on. The important point for today's lesson, however, is that we can use the passive voice when describing almost any process in an IELTS writing task one process diagram. So we could say the limestone and clay are crushed. They are mixed. You can say the mixture is heated and it is ground. Then it is bagged. So a lot of these nouns simply become verbs and the verbs become passive voice. In the second part of the diagram, we can see concrete is made. However, there's really nothing we can, in, we can uh, see that can become a verb here. So we have to be a bit more creative. But to be honest, it's not that difficult. There are four things, cement, water, sand, and gravel that are simply put into this concrete mixture. So you can use the verb to put, you can say to add, um, and then we use the verb to mix. So let's see a sample answer for this question. So here's our sample answer. It says, there are two diagrams showing industrial processes. The first shows the production of cement, while the second shows the production of concrete. It is apparent from the beginning of the second picture that cement is used in the production of concrete, and so these images are linked as, a part, as part of one longer process to make concrete from a number of different materials. In this introduction, which is unusual in that it's much longer than the other paragraphs, I have described the basic idea of the whole diagram by breaking it into two and showing what goes in and what comes out. 
So I've given the bigger picture here without giving any specific details. The next two paragraphs in order describe the left and then the right diagram. In the, di in the diagram showing cement production, limestone and clay are tipped into a crusher until they become powder. This powder is then fed into a mixer and then later into a rotating heater. The resulting material is ground into cement, which is then bagged in large sacks. You can see the repetition of the passive voice. So we've got are tipped, is fed, is ground and is bagged. This happens again in the next paragraph. These bags of cement are poured into a concrete mixture, into a concrete mixer with water, sand, gravel and sand. This mixture must be carefully measured according to the percentages on the diagram. The concrete mixer will combine the ingredients by rotating in order to produce concrete. So here I use the passive voice for R poured. When describing any process diagram for IELTS writing, using the passive voice is incredibly important. It's not the only voice and it's good to use a mixture of passive and active, but it is essential to giving you the best description in the most informal and objective way, ensuring that you can get a far higher band score. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson Please don't forget to subscribe, to give this video a like, and to come back next time for another episode of TED IELTS. I've been David Wills. Thank you for joining me today.